which is um, Heinrich. So, is he here? Oh, very good. We'll hand over your capable hands. Okay. So, ah, okay. Do we have a pointer or? Um... Yes, we do. Uh, uh, this one here. Okay. Okay. And how do I proceed with uh, the green one? Okay. Okay. Move it forward. Forward. okay. So, thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you all for staying so late. And uh, thanks also to the organizers for inviting me to give this presentation on our uh, developments in the field of tumor uh, immunotherapy. Um, the title of my talk is RNA Nanomedicines for Individualized uh, Tumor Immunotherapy, Translation from Basic Research into Clinical Phase 1 Trials, and therefore I think I meet some of the uh, keywords which are required for this conference. And before I go into detail, I would like to present to you our organization, which is a little bit particular. And before I present the uh, organization, I would like to present to you the key persons who, who more or less were fundamental for having this going on with their research at the uh, medical school at the Mainz University, Christoph Huber, Ursula Terzi, and uh, Uwe Sahin, who did groundbreaking research and then uh, uh, initiated certain spin-outs out of the uh, university. First, they founded uh, Ganymed in 2001, where we develop um, uh, monoclonal antibodies, so-called ideal antibodies. BioNTech, the company where I am in, uh, was founded in uh, 2008. There is a kind of non-profit organization, Tron, which is functioning as an incubator, as an intermediate uh, 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 step between academic research and pharmaceutical development. There's KIMT, uh, which is a... Oh, uh, a, a conference on immunotherapy, which uh, uh, takes place every year in Mainz, um, and uh, we won a, 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 a grant for, for for an excellence cluster, also focusing on individualized uh, uh, immune intervention, uh, uh, which went to the whole Rhein-Main area where we are also in. Um, I'm at BioNTech, and to give you an introduction into BioNTech, which is also a, a bit complex, BioNTech is a, a holding consisting of uh, several daughter companies which all follow individual concepts uh, uh, focusing on therapy or diagnostics in, in, in the um, immunology field in the widest uh, thinkable sense. I would not like to go into details. Uh, what I will present to you is uh, results from BioNTech RNA uh, pharmaceuticals, but I would like to mention that we do have a manufacturing site in a city close to mines uh, where we manufacture our RNA and the liposomes we use for our investigation and medicine and products. So, Tumor immune immunotherapy. As you all know, um, and it has been mentioned several times also during this conference, um, tumor cells can be discriminated from healthy cells by certain motives by tumor associated antigens, and these antigens are recognized by the immune system. So the immune system efficiently uh, uh, kills uh, tumor cells, so that's why not much more people suffer from cancer. But in certain instances, it is not able to, uh, to attack uh, the tumor cells anymore. And therefore, our aim is to uh, uh, activate and selectively direct uh, the immune response, the, the natural immune response of the body against uh, uh, tumor cells uh, via the tumor-associated antigens. How do we do that? Um, we do it using messenger RNA. So we do not deliver conventional or uh, classical uh, antigens to, to like in, 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 in a vaccination. As we, we all know, we deliver messenger RNA, which codes for a tumor antigen. Uh, the messenger RNA is delivered to um, uh, antigen-presenting cells, and this initiates a whole cascade of immunological processes where, in the end, uh, a proliferation of uh, tumor-associated antigen-specific T cells is uh, stimulated, and these T cells are supposed to attack and kill the, the tumor cells. In addition, we have uh, several other immunological responses which uh, uh, act in an adjuvant manner towards this uh, um, immuno, uh, immunotherapy. So, 
how do we get our RNA? Our RNA is, 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 is manufactured by, a, uh, by an enzymatic uh, process based uh, starting from uh, a an, an, an DNA template. And uh, the whole process of RNA manufacturing uh, has been uh, optimized towards improved uh, stability and expression efficacy of the RNA. So we have virtually uh, optimized uh, all kinds of, of molecular uh, uh, functions in, in, in the RNA for uh, three prime, five prime UTR, uh, the, the cap structure, the poly A tile, and from that uh, uh, we uh, ended up in, in a highly efficient uh, uh, and long-lasting uh, uh, um, expression of the antigen or the protein from, uh, from the RNA. One key reason why we do this is that with the RNA we can go into real, true, personalized uh, medicine in the sense that we uh, um, start off with a patient. The patient comes to the clinic uh, with a tumor. A biosection from the tumor is taken. Uh, the tumor is, is sequenced in comparison uh, to healthy tissue and then using certain uh, uh, bio-computational uh, algorithms we uh, identify uh, certain uh, mutations uh, that code for epitopes and we identify uh, the, uh, uh, these mutations that are most favorable in the sense of an immunological uh, intervention. Having identified this, um, uh, uh, these epitopes, uh, we translate them into a uh, DNA uh, template, and from that, uh, the RNA is specifically manufactured for this individual patient under GMP, and then we have the uh, uh, drug product for treating the patient ready in, in a time scale of, of weeks. Actually, uh, the longest time uh, in this process is the sterility test for the final drug product, uh, as this takes uh, some weeks. Now we have a, uh, an individualized uh, drug product, and we still need to bring it into the patient. And uh, for bringing to the patient, delivery is the key word, and we have two r main routes of delivering uh, uh, RNA to antigen-presenting cells in the patient. One is a, a, a local administration into the lymph nodes, where the RNA is uh, injected in, in, in a buffer system, and it's uh, uptaken in this confined space by macropenicitosis by the APCs. This is a highly efficient and, 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 and effective way to deliver RNA, and we are devoid of all the problems of uh, delivery, uh, our, uh, degradation by RNAs, the serum interactions, and so on. However, to be more versatile, we have also developed a, a, a platform of uh, uh, RNA lipid nanoparticles, which can be administered systemically, intravenously, and which then migrate selectively to the organ of interest of, and here uh, we are uh, in the development cycles, we were interested in the spleen because spleen is rich in, in, in dendritic cells uh, and degen-presenting cells. So uh, for the for, for, uh, further talk, I will focus mostly on these uh, uh, um, formulations, nanoparticle formulations for uh, systemic delivery after systemic ad administration. Here I show you what our formulations do. These are two different formulations of RNA. RNA is coding for luciferase, and we do bioimaging. Um, and you see that in, in formulation one, we uh, get a preferential expression in the lung and a little bit in, in, in the spleen, while for formulation two, we get uh, almost exclusive expression in the, uh, in the spleen. And as the spleen is our reporter organ for uh, antigen-presenting cells, this is kind of a target formulation for us for, for the development. So uh, I think we don't have so much time to go into details, but I just would like to give you some, some, some snapshots of, of, of how we came to that. Basically, our formulation development was, was driven by, 
by physical and physical chemical insights, just like uh, Mother Ferrari presented uh, yesterday. So we look on on on, on the, the nanoparticles as colloidal systems, which are characterized by parameters like size, phase state, state of uh, 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 molecular organization, rigidity, and then correlate physical chemical par parameters with, with the performance in, in vitro and in vivo. And here is your typical curve which we measure. So we, we here we incubate RNA and, and, and liposomes, cationic liposomes in that case, in different ratios. And uh, we, we measure particle size. And you see there are ranges where the particle size is confined, where it diverges. This is a charge equilibrium. So you screen the elect electrostatic repulsion. And uh, then it goes down again. And in the same time, uh, the zeta potential switches uh, uh, from negative to positive. So we can make uh, these particles and we can bring them into, in, into biological testing. And we uh, look also on many other parameters here just to give you an idea. Don't discuss this data. We can extract lots of information on them here. You see X-ray scattering data. You see nice Bragg peaks, which correspond nicely to the information we get from electron microscopy in terms of, of lamellarity and internal organization. And based on this data, we, 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 we test certain systems in, in vivo. And here you can you see how we now can modulate, we can steer, we can direct the delivery from one type of organ to the other. And uh, as a result, we select uh, uh, the one which is optimum uh, at optimum in terms of uh, efficacy and selectivity and take that as a basis for further clinical development. So we had our clinical development candidate. To come up with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, a clinical formulations, of course, you have to do upscaling. You have to change your manufacturing protocols for both the precursor components and the final IMP, which we have done. Uh, we found uh, 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 GMP-compliant methods for, for manufacturing of all of our components. And in the end, we came up uh, with a kit approach for, for our uh, uh, investigation in medicinal product, where we deliver RNA and the diluent uh, and liposomes uh, in separate vials for preparation of the injectable product directly prior to uh, administration to the patient. The reason is that this uh, protocol is really versatile and allows us to use it for many different uh, coherences in different clinical studies. Uh, the constitution or preparation, this actually depends on the uh, opinion of the local authorities. It's very easy and straightforward. You uh, dilute the RNA with, with, with the diluent and then you add the, uh, the liposomes and you end up in a slightly opaque uh, uh, dispersion which is then ready for injection to the patient. Um, here uh, I have listed some of the, the antigens which we use for our first clinical studies. Some of them are well known from uh, uh, earlier uh, cancer vaccine trials. Some of them have been tested already in earlier studies uh, from ourselves where we had intranodal injection and there are also no, uh, novel targets and uh, the important thing is that we combine four different antigens which are uh, extremismed uh, uh, and modes to the patients. Um, tox data uh, were uh, 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 nice and, and, and uh, unproblematic, excellent safety profile. We found uh, pharmacodynamic effects uh, which were typical for, for, for a vaccination reaction, like uh, 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 certain cytokine levels, but which went back to, to the ordinary level uh, soon after administration. This is uh, some information on the, on the on the first clinical study we, we initiated with these uh, four uh, tumor antigens I, I, I mentioned to you. So we started just this year in, in May and treated the first patients uh, uh, already uh, uh, for five cycles. We continuously increase uh, the dose and found already at relatively low doses indication for, for, for immunological responses, which is uh, good in a certain sense. And um, so uh, we hope that we are th this will continue to see, give also uh, information on the expression on the direct uh, antigens, which we have not measured yet so far for this study. Here, this is, this is a summary of other studies we, we, we have initiated or which are in, in currently in planning. There are studies with intranodal administration as well as with uh, intravenous administration. There are studies with generic compositions of uh, uh, 
definite antigens. Uh, there are studies where we use a so-called warehouse, where, where, where patients are stratified, and from the warehouse, the most uh, 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 um, relevant antigens are selected, and we have strictly individualized medications which are administered to the patients. Um, this uh, was the end. I would like to uh, thank all the, the collaborators. This is uh, a cooperation of, of many different people in the company. This is a uh, preclinical department, uh, Lena, Kastian, Mustafa, Eve, Sebastian, many more, Andreas Kuhn and the uh, RNA bio biochemistry group, the, the project manager, see just two of them. And this is some people from the formulation development group who, who worked on, on, on the formulation development. Gerald Pratisinski from Max Planck Institute of College and Interfaces uh, in, in and uh, Sergio Final, where we made some of our extra measurements. And of course, nothing of this would have been possible without Ugo Sain, who is the great driving force and who uh, is really uh, providing a stimulating uh, environment to bring this ahead. Thank you for your uh, attention. We're going to reset the clock now. Um, we're going to reset the clock now. And uh, Oh, it's going. It's going. There you go. Time for five minutes for questions. So. Please. Just a question about the choice of the intravenous route for administration. Uh, in some many cases, RNA lipoplexis have been found to be toxic by the systemic administration because of these cytokine releases and other, other uh, uh, systemic toxic effects. What is going to be the advantage for a vaccine by being given uh, by the intravenous route as opposed to a subcutaneous route? Um, yes, that's a good question. Of course, we have tested also subcutaneous intramuscular and, and uh, several other routes, but uh, we found that uh, with the uh, uh, intravenous route, we get this very high selectivity, which depends on the particle properties. And one big advantage is that we can address much more antigen-presenting cells compared to an intramuscular, which is kind of a almost local administration or sub-Q uh, administration. So uh, we have uh, some technological uh, advantages we have more uh, parameters which we can vary for future development. We can uh, administer more or uh, um, higher doses, and so we have more freedom to operate with this kind of administration. Okay, question there, please. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the talk. My, pre my question goes also in a similar direction, so it's not clear for me what is the selection? What is the individual component? Because you said that you are selecting some antigens or epitopes, but it seems that this is an universal vaccine. So do you have some particular peptides of all four antigens, or are four antigens out of many? And then do you use any adjuvant? Because uh, the IV is not the most immunogenic route that you could imagine. Yes, um, so we, we uh, to answer the first question, we do all of it. In some of our studies, we have fixed composition of, of, of antigens, which are uh, known from, uh, from the literature or which have been developed by us. In other studies, we have the so-called warehouse approach. So this is for the, the, the uh, TNPC uh, uh, breast cancer study. Patients are screened, and we have a warehouse of uh, 20 to 30 antigens. And uh, so they are administered with the antigens for which they are most positive. Uh, and this selection has, uh, is also done by certain algorithms. For the personalized approach, uh, it is, as I said, we, 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 we sequence the patient and apply algorithms in order to identify uh, the, 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 the most immunogenic epitopes. So it's really strictly uh, uh, personalized for the patients. Uh, what was the second question? The adjuvant, but, I still, I, uh, but, but the most uh, immunogenic based on what? Because if this will be extracted... This you should have already an immune response. Uh, well, it, uh, this is what the, the, the guys uh, implement in, into their, their algorithms. And the, the immunogenicity, the RNA is a strong adjuvant, so we don't need adjuvants. Okay. I'm wondering about this by distribution of the different uh, particles. Uh, uh, in one case, almost everything ended up in spleen. Do you understand why it's almost everything ends in spleen and nothing in liver? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think uh, the reason why it not goes to the liver is the selection of our lipids because they are not good transfection reagents for the liver. Um, the reason why it goes to the spleen and nowhere else is 
uh, let's say the, the the uptake of mechanism. Basically, as I showed you this 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 charge scale, and what we administer is uh, nanoparticles with an excess negative charge. So these are actually dysfunctional transfection reagent. Nobody would administer a, a negatively charged transfection reagents because it doesn't transfect ordinary cells. However, dendritic cells and, and related ones, uh, they are professionally uptaking foreign compounds and maybe particularly slightly negatively charged ones because bacteria are a bit more negatively charged than our, our cells. And so it is the, um, the particular uptake mechan mechanism of, uh, of the cells we are targeting. We don't need to breach the cellular membrane. It's an open door and they, uh, they catch them. I also wonder uh, if the size were the same for the particles homing in spleen and those uh, where you had a considerable amount in, in heart. In lungs. In, in lung. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we tried our best to make, the, to, to make them uh, equally uh, in size. Maybe there, were, there was some tens of nanometers in difference, but uh, they were equally in size. But what I can say is that size matters. And we find that, uh, as it's known in the community, that uh, for this uh, purpose, larger particles perform better than smaller ones. I'm going to use the, the chairman's prerogative to ask one last question, and uh, if you could be very quick on the answer, perhaps. But your dose size is quite small at a milligram, and I was wondering whether in man you're going to see a problem with natural antibodies taking out quite a large percentage of that milligram material. And my rider on it also was the cost of treatment in man. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, that's, uh, let's say for the, for the antibodies, we, we don't know yet actually, uh, because uh, 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 we haven't investigated that. Interestingly, yeah, that's very remarkable that we get uh, a signal already at relatively low doses, lower than in the corresponding doses in mice. And uh, the cost, of course, that's, that's, that's a, a key issue, particularly for the individualized uh, nanomedicine, because you have to manufacture uh, individualized nanomedicines, and do we uh, think we will not up, end up as dendrian. So our aim is to bring down the cost of manufacturing by several uh, orders of magnitude just due to scaling and parallelization effects, just like uh, a USB stick or, or a cell phone costs nothing uh, anymore, almost nothing. We think that we will be able to bring okay. down the, the cost for manufacturing this individualized uh, uh, um, arthropodics, for example, by automatization, taking a man out and having machines doing the job. Thank you, everybody.